Hello, I'm John. I do the smokeless powder guns on this channel and my buddy Dimwit, he does the black powder guns. And welcome to my video number 12 about the Krog rifles, Norwegian Krog rifles. Customized mostly. And uh, I made these 12 videos during the last two months and this is gonna be the last Krag video from me for quite a while. We'll move on to some other things. And some of you might think I saved the best for last. And you might be right. And um, so this is a Steyr made uh, Krag, uh, made in 1897. Uh, it's made for the Norwegian army. It's an infantry rifle model 1894, or at least it used to be. And it's been uh, changed into about as an advanced competition rifle as you can possibly get in a Krag rifle. And then I have uh, changed it into, you could say, a sniper rifle with a scope and a bipod. Uh, but I've done something different with this one. The scope comes off really easy and you can put the diopter sight back on and of course the the bipod also comes off real easy just slides off of here so i can put the um, diopter sight back on here take the bipod off i can still uh, go and compete in these uh, shooting matches that we have over here in norway and I can put the scope back on and I can uh, compete in, uh, in uh, the scope class. And, uh, and there's some guys that have these long range shooting matches and I can put the bipod on it. So I can use this for anything. Um, let's have a closer look. Now, you, if you've seen my other videos, you have seen two other rifles that have similar stocks. But this is the most advanced one of them all. And as I usually do, I put the scope a little bit offset to the left so that the cartridges will eject. And this one isn't as far to the left as the others. It's only half an inch thereabouts. And in one of my other videos, I talked about how you sight in a rifle with an offset uh, scope and uh, here you can see the the base the mount, mount that I used oh, uh, so uh, uh, we were talking about what this used to be and I put the this sour inspired uh, Sturmoen stock onto it and 21 millimeter heavy match barrel made by Kongsberg weapons factory and it's got a uh, Kongsberg match trigger assembly and it's got a leather competition sling and I put a bipod on a pick piece of Picatinny rail that can be can slide it off here and then 
it's got uh, a Firewolf uh, 3 to 9 by 40 scope. I also have uh, exactly the same scope and another rifle, so I have discussed this scope earlier. It's just an inexpensive uh, uh, scope from eBay. But I do have the quality Burris Signature rings with these uh, nylon inserts uh, that you can get offset uh, versions of so you can mount your scope with a little bit of elevation and that will give you more clicks to reach out further and um, so oh let's see I'll try to do this in the right order uh, we talked about the ejection of the cartridges and and um, so the empty cartridge flips up like this barely clears the uh, scope and on this gun I have used an old trick that we do on crogs I have uh, turned the scope a quarter of a turn to the left so the sideways turret now becomes the up and down turret and the, uh, the elevation turret and, and vice versa so and that's because the sh uh, brass would hit the turret so but um, this works very good um, It doesn't have any problems at all. Uh, and um, so let's take the scope off and put the diopter on. Slides off like that. And uh, so there you can see the burst signature rings on top of that loophole double D mount and, and that's mounted on to a piece of steel that I made and, and then this dovetail shaped rail uh, that sits underneath uh, these uh, diopter sites made by Scow and uh, so we'll slide this on there and tighten the screw so now it's got a diopter sight Now these diopter sights might look big and clumsy, but they're real good. I suppose you have more adjustments back and forth to suit your eye. And uh, a lot of times I see Krag rifles that have been drilled for other diopter sights, but they have been removed and they put a scow diopter on it instead. But you can't put a scope mount on just any scout diopter mount. Most of them is like this one here with a uh, aluminum mount. You see this, uh, there's the turning knob and there's the black aluminum piece here. And that's just not strong enough to hold a scope so but the really early ones they have a steel base here which is a lot stronger and you rarely see them i bought a complete rifle just to get that mount and you rarely see these stocks i bought a rifle just to get the stock and uh, it's all been put to good use so there you have it um, and uh, oh let's see 
there. Bipod comes off, and there's a piece of Picatinny rail, and just got to loosen a couple of screws, and it will slide out of there if you want to. So, this gun is kind of a jack of all trades, but it's a really good gun, and I'd be willing to sell it uh, with or without the scope if you'd like to get a higher priced scope for it. Uh, I wouldn't want to get anything heavier than that. And I'd be willing to sell it with or without the bipod in case you want a more higher priced bipod on there. This is just a Chinese cheap one. So, and uh, if you haven't already seen my other Krog videos, I think you should. Well, there's one where I showed them all at one time, and there's even a couple of mousers in there that we're going to have a look at later on. And there's one video where I discuss m mounting scopes on the Krog rifle and uh, then uh, the rest of them are just a uh, closer look at each rifle and I have uh, got the whole couple of more Krogs that are going to be my projects for next winter and uh, I made a video with one of them just to show what they typically look like uh, when I get them and if you're a Norwegian gun owner, I urge you to adopt a Krog rifle. They're being scrapped almost on a daily basis in this country, and uh, it's a shame, really. Uh, it's a wonderful rifle to, to own and use. And... Um, I guess I can't think of anything else I need to say right now, so uh, we're gonna call it a day. And uh, next time you'll probably see me with uh, a Mauser. Okay, here.